Hi. So I saw this tweet by Ben Dixon, super smart guy, really worth following. And he's worried that older people in America are falling for the Michael Bloomberg pitch. His, this oligarch's attempt to buy the Democratic nomination just by spamming out adverts. Uh, and Ben reckoned that uh, one of the best ways to counter this is to get onto Facebook, which is really where a lot of older people are rather than Twitter. Uh, that That's something I've been doing for many years myself, uh, is engaging with people on Facebook to try and persuade them politically. So I thought I'd throw together a, a quick video. So, how to use Facebook politically. Step one, take your account public or make a public account. It's going to be easier if you're happy to take an existing account public. Uh, for me, I got really, I just got fed up with Facebook uh, as a whole and I, I was going to delete my account and I thought, uh, it was actually a friend advised, well, just, just take it public, use it for politics. So I cleaned it up a bit. Really important part of, of taking an account public. You know, you don't want anything like incriminating or, or embarrassing on there. Um, depending on where you live and what the safety situation is like for socialists, you, uh, m you, know, you might get away with more or less personally identifying information. But because it's Facebook, you really do need to have, uh, you know, a photo of your face. Um, you do need to have some personal information on there or people won't find it genuine. Uh, it's really important to be genuine when you're doing this. Uh, although you're going to be curating your profile uh, rather than putting everything out there, you know. Uh, so set your account to public. Set your posts to public by default. Delete anything you don't want people seeing. That's step one. Step two is to add people. So f Facebook lets you have uh, up to 5,000 friends. I'm not sure if people can follow you in addition to that. I really recommend targeting an area, uh, depending where you live. Like for me, I just target Scotland. Not all of my Facebook friends are in Scotland, but most of them are. Um, it might be appropriate, you know, to just target your city, even your bar, you know, if you're somewhere really dense, like if you're in Brooklyn, maybe you just want to do Brooklyn people mostly. And if you think about it, 5,000 people actually becomes quite a lot then. So like Scotland has a population of five and a half million. And that means you know, I can be hitting about 0.1% of the population directly. And when you take into account friends of friends, could quite easily be hitting, uh, with, with a really good post, could be hitting 1%, 2% of the population of my whole country. Uh, in your case, maybe your whole state, if it's a smaller state, if you know, it's I, somewhere like Iowa's got, I think, three and a half million people. Um, or if it's, uh, yeah, if it's a city, you know, a decent proportion, like it just enough that you're actually having some sort of an effect that's worthwhile. A uh, couple of other tips you want to uh, skip opponents like there's there's no point in friending a Trump voter that isn't just, just, there's no benefit you know if, if they're a committed Trump voter that you're never going to persuade if you if you end up with one on your friends list just unfriend them block them doesn't matter bye bye pal uh, but do be careful to distinguish between people who are very committed and people who are persuadable and that's something that you'll uh, you'll get a feel for as you go along. Uh, but ideally you want a mixture of people who are sympathetic because they're going to back you up with comments, they're going to provide you with posts to share yourself, uh, and people who are indifferent or don't know as much, uh, who are the people that you're, you're really looking to persuade. So there's, uh, I reckon, like two basic categories of content here, low effort, and higher effort, higher reward. Low effort is what I'll do, the way I just keep the, my account ticking over. Um, just, you know, links that I see on Twitter or on Reddit, things that are interesting, memes, 
I'll just copy them to my account, maybe add a little comment if I think there's something that I've got to contribute. Uh, and that means that, so this is like, this is actually like really simple, you know, public account, sit on the suggested friends thing and add people, post the links that you're looking at anyway, the memes, screenshot other people's tweets if they're particularly informative or useful easy to do and I've, i found that that like low effort posting has just become a reflex i just keep it ticking over and the effect is actually it's quite incredible uh slightly terrifying for me some people say to me um that, you know this happens several times a year someone says to me oh, i don't i don't really follow the news i just get all of my news from your facebook account and the other category is high reward uh where you write posts if if you write a post so many more people will see it I don't know why Facebook, I, mean, I guess Facebook consider that higher quality automatically. Sometimes I'll even write a post, put a link in it and remove the preview. I want to talk about what these, what these look like. You have to ex explain everything like starting from just the absolute basics. If, uh, so we're talking about Michael Bloomberg. Uh, I, I'm a politically educated guy. I've worked in the US. I know American politics really well. I knew that Michael Bloomberg had been uh, mayor of New York. I didn't know that he'd run as a Republican to become mayor of New York. And I'll bet you that most Americans don't know that either. Like, I would put $100, $100 down on that in a bet. Uh, and I think if the Democratic electorate all knew that about him, he would not be riding so high in the polls. But because people who aren't from New York don't know anything about him, you know, he can just portray himself however he wants in adverts. Beyond that, people I find don't necessarily understand the human consequences of policies. They don't, like most people are basically decent, but they don't have uh, the background knowledge. So I recommend always assuming your audience are intelligent, but busy. Like, I'll never forget uh, canvassing. You'd meet so many people who like, their hearts were in the right place. They certainly were not stupid. Uh, but, you know, they catch. But they've got kids. They've got a job. Life's exhausting. Capitalism is exhausting. And they're uh, catching snippets of the news. Uh, and trying to piece together what's going on from that. So you need to be earnest, you need to be thorough uh, when you're explaining something that's new to people. And I think it's important uh, not to, it's not, not don't shit post or get into fights with people. This isn't your Twitter account where you, you you might be trolling and making jokes all the time. It's not your Instagram where you might feel that in some way you're expressing yourself. Uh, it's a curated news feed in which you present a curated version of yourself. Now, it should still be genuine. I, I would not ever lie or deviate from your uh, sincerely held beliefs, but when you're going to say something, really think about uh, how you can be the most persuasive to the widest audience. Take cues from the campaign. This is really important because uh, any election, and especially things like the, the Scottish independence referendum or this primary, it gets really emotionally intense. You know, the media are gaslighting you. Uh, people are arguing with each other. There's real life and death issues on the line to do with health care, to do with criminal justice, to do with debt. And it can be very easy to get sucked into, uh, you know, the latest drama. Uh, some recent examples have been, you know, the whole Elizabeth Warren, uh, did Bernie say something sexist? dispute, uh, some of the stuff around Pete Buttigieg in Iowa, 
Like these things do really matter, don't get me wrong. And it's important to rebut smears quickly and decisively. It's important to uh, highlight that Bernie won Iowa, no matter what they try and say. But it's important not to get stuck. You've always got to pivot back to the offensive and be moving on to the next vote. I think the best way to keep yourself grounded is to watch what the professionals are doing. So that's Brianna Joy Gray and David Sorota on Twitter. Whatever it is that they're talking about is where the campaign has decided to focus its attention. If they're talking about Bloomberg, Bloomberg is the topic. If they're talking about healthcare, healthcare is the topic. You know, if they're rebutting something, you're still in rebuttal. If they've pivoted on to the next, uh, the next offensive or the next key message, that's where you need to be. That said, you want to tailor these things to your local audience. If you're in Iowa, then you might well still be talking about the Iowa caucuses and what went wrong and what needs to happen in the Iowa Democratic Party. Uh, if you're in Nevada, then it should be you know, all about what's coming up in Nevada and persuading people to caucus for Bernie. I would also avoid talking too much about fixes and stolen votes. And the reason for that is think about what you're trying to do. You're trying to get voters who are less likely to vote to go out and vote. And if they don't think that their vote is going to count for anything, they're not going to do that because that's what they already think, right? That's why people don't vote like especially poor people, people of colour, you know, younger people vote at much lower rates because they don't believe their vote is going to change anything in their lives. More than anything, more than anything else, your job is to persuade those people that it's worth voting. So the kind of truther stuff militates against that. If you're like, oh, they stole Iowa... You go on about that for ages. You know, someone might be like, well, it's, you know, someone in Nevada might go, well, is there any reason for me to even bother? You know, I could just stay home with my kids and I don't have to pay a babysitter and you've just lost a vote. So it's very important to keep a balance with these things. Try to keep it positive uh, or at least try and mix positive information in with the negative in the Scottish independence campaign, uh, we felt, and admittedly we, we did lose that, but we got a much better result than anyone expected us to. Um, we felt that two thirds positive to a third negative was about the right proportion. So that means you're, you know, two thirds of your time you're talking about uh, Bernie's amazing plans and how it's going to make everything better for everyone. The other third of the time is like explaining that Bloomberg is a, a racist. So I'm just going to step through a few examples of my own posts. Uh, but I'm, just, I'm just kind of showing you this to show, you know, how these text posts, they can get lots of likes if you nail it uh, and really keep the language simple, make it really obvious. So here, Scottish Government publishes 94 page report into Scotland's migration needs suggests ways we would like to do things differently from the rest of the UK. A few hours later, not enough time to digest it, the UK government rejects it. So I've made really sure there not to assume anything. I could have said, Scottish government uh, publishes migration report, UK government dismisses it out of hand. But by making it really clear, it was only a few hours later, not enough time to digest it. It was a long report. Someone who's never heard of this report before gets the whole story in just a few words. Really important. This is one of my greatest hits from back in 2014. This takes a bit of explaining, um, but I'll just quickly draw your attention to the fact that it's got 702 shares. That's a lot of shares. This post... Uh, which is, you know, pretty, it, it sort of breaks from my usual keep it simple message. Uh, th this probably had an impact on the Scottish independence referendum because that, that's a lot, like not, you know, 
not an enormous impact, but probably a measurable one. So um, what was happening here was there was a television debate and our guy had taken a hit on what currency Scotland was going to use. He'd, he, just, he blustered on stage. He hadn't handled the question well. So straight away, I got the stupidly over-detailed thing. I knew where this was already in some PDF. Fiscal Commission Working Group Macroeconomic Framework. I'm that kind of nerd. Uh, but I knew that was out there. And as soon as uh, you know, I saw that we'd taken a hit on this one question, I was able to go and get this big detailed thing. And what's important here is nobody understands this. Nobody, I mean, you know, nobody understands this. But it just made it clear that while our, our guy hadn't given a good answer on stage, there were, there were detailed answers out there. Because in this case, people just needed to feel like somebody had a detailed answer. Uh, so they've, they've hidden this option. Uh, but if you go into Friends and then Find Friends and then scroll down past uh, what for me is quite a lot of friend requests, you get people you may know. So once you've built up a few friends or if you're already using a pre-existing account, you know, it's suggesting folk, these are probably all great people to add. Literally just sit and do this. Takes no time. If you keep doing this, you will get to 4,000. 5,000 in no time. That's it. that's it really. That's how I run my socialist, the Scottish nationalist Facebook account, how I've done it for ooh, eight or nine years now. Um, and from what people tell me, I've, I've actually had a real, a real impact on their political views. They re really value what I'm doing um, and it's persuaded people to vote for the causes I believe in. So if you have the temperament for this, I think it's a, a great way to push a cause like Bernie Sanders, especially to you know Gen X and Boomer people who just aren't on some of these other platforms. Um, but everyone's on Facebook uh, and it's a great way to undercut advertising spend as well because people will believe a friend even a facebook friend over a paid advertisement so go out there make a facebook account make lots of new friends and persuade them to vote for socialism good luck comrades